Okay, welcome to our second video. We're going to take a look at some of the tools that are available here and go ahead and draw a little building and call it a museum. And so I've got my tool set all established along the left-hand margin here. And um, the tool that I'm going to use probably the most often is this pencil tool. And um, you can get back to your cursor tool at any time by just clicking on top of um, the select button there. Uh, but I'm going to use this pencil tool and with the pencil tool you can draw anything um, kind of anywhere. So I'm going to use the pencil tool and I'm going to draw a shape that's going to become the floor of my building. And uh, this lady, by the way, I didn't talk about her, she's there for scale. A lot of times when we're drawing in an imaginary environment and there's no real references, we have no idea how big something is. You know, is this room eight feet long or eight miles long? Well, it's hard to tell. So um, SketchUp puts a nice lady standing in the corner. Um, and you can talk about the social implications of that on your own. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to use this pencil and I'm going to draw a line. Now Revit, or Revit, uh, sorry, I'll probably do that a lot. SketchUp will allow me to draw lines a particular length. So I'm going to start in this origin. So I've always got my XYZ axes, which G sounds like a way of uh, talking about geometry. Uh, but I've got my XYZ axes here and I'm going to start my line in this origin just by hovering over it until it turns uh, yellow and gives me a little indication there that says origin. I'm going to click once to start that line and so now uh, SketchUp is waiting on me to decide where I'm drawing it to. So uh, it gives me, this isn't a great place to, to show you, but um, it gives me the opportunity to make it a particular length and a particular direction. So I've got my cursor headed along the green axis. It tells me that I'm, I'm doing that. And then on my keyboard I'm going to enter the dimension for this line. So um, SketchUp thinks in inches. So if I wanted a 10 foot long um, line, I could enter just 120 and hit the enter button and I would get 120 inches or 10 feet. Well, I want a 25 foot wall. So if I want to work in feet, I have to enter the foot mark. So 25 and you can watch the length down in the lower right hand corner. That's a 4. 25 and then from your keyboard uh, the footmark or the apostrophe and click on enter and now I've got a line that is 25 feet long. I can start my next line, you know I don't have to click yet, I can just start my next line going in whatever direction I want. Notice that as I start that line it pops to different colors so if I'm going straight up it turns blue and it tells me it's on the blue axis. If I'm going uh, directly to the east or the, the right it tells me I'm on my red axis. I can go over to the other side and be on the red axis. I can go straight down and be on the blue axis. I can continue on the green axis if I want to. So you can it's really easy to make right angles in SketchUp and that's really important uh, when you get into complex shapes you want to be able to tell exactly what angle you're on. So anyway, so I'm going to start this line on the red axis direction and this time I'm going to make a 50 foot line and gee, it went off the screen. I can't see the other end of my line. I've got it. I know it's there. I've got another line, um, but I want to be able to make a rectangle and uh, this isn't working. So I need to pan to get over to uh, that end of my building. So I go over here onto my toolbar and I click the pan button and now on my cursor is this little hand and now I can, I can pan until I get to the end of that line. So I'm grayed out on my uh, drawing tool. I can simply grab that pencil again and move in this direction and but I didn't place it to where I can actually see the um, red axis which is where I want to be. So I can use the pan tool again or I can use a shortcut and hold down the shift button and my roller on my mouse at the same time and just move my my view and so there I am on the red axis I can zoom out and do that same thing and draw my line down that way so what you've just seen me do are some keyboard shortcuts that will let you manipulate your model spin it around orbit and pan a lot quicker 
than if you actually go over here and grab the orbit tool and then the pan tool. So the orbit tool is available on your mouse just by holding down the roller button. It automatically goes to the orbit command. If I do that same thing, but this time I hold down the shift key on my keyboard and the roller on my mouse and now I can pan. Right? So that'll make things easier for um, getting started. Okay, so now I've got a structure, a structure, I've got a, a, a shape that is 25 by 50 feet, and I'm going to call this a room. And so I want to create some volume here. So I'm going to create volume by using this little guy over here, which is the push pull tool. So I click once on push pull, and then the thing that I want to push or pull is this uh, floor slab that I just created. And so I'm going to click once on it, and then I'm going to move my cursor straight up to get it started. And uh, I want to be precise about my dimensioning here as well. So I'm going to hit 12 feet and enter. And so now I've got something that's 12 feet long. If I want to go back and, ch and check that, I can click on my tape measure tool over here on my toolbar and that puts a tape measure on my cursor and so now I can measure from my first click to my second click and that was 12 feet so I know I'm okay so now I've got this volume I'm gonna actually uh, orbit up just a little bit so that I can look down at the top of it and I'm going to select this top plane um, that would be the, the flat roof. I'm going to select that one. It turns blue for me. And I'm going to click the delete button on my keyboard. I could also, let me go back to edit and undo that. I could also hover over it, do a right click on my mouse that, that selects it and gives me a flyout menu at the same time and hit erase. That's another way of getting rid of that plane if you want to. So now I've got this empty box and there's the nice lady staring at the corner. And so now I want to give these walls some volume. So I'm going to make copies of the planes. And this will make more sense if you just kind of watch what I do. And <clears throat> then you can repeat it. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is select this push-pull tool again. But this time I want to click my control button on my keyboard one time. So the control button and that puts a plus next to my push-pull tool. So now I click on that plane and I drag it toward the inside and now it's going to give me a second plane and I'm going to place it six inches away from the first. Go over here, grab that one, bring that one in, six inches, enter. That one, six inches, enter. This one, six inches, enter. So now I've got walls that have some volume to them, which might be handy if you wanted to actually calculate space where you could put insulation or something like that. So now I can recenter this just a little bit. And notice that I've still got lines that happen here. So my original volumes or my original planes are still existing. I can go in, <clears throat> if I wanted to move this, let's say I wanted to move just this, since there's a line there, I can move just that. If I hover over that edge, it'll snap to that edge for me. But let's say that I didn't want that for whatever reason. I can always just go in with an eraser and erase that line and maybe that line. Um, let's, let's try to illustrate that again from the other direction. So maybe I wanted to do that push-pull thing and I'm going to pull this top up and see since I have lines still here it's allowing me to pull that up as its own thing if I go in and erase that line and then do the push-pull on the top of that wall now all the walls go or all the walls that I can see are going cool so I go over here and I put I click on push-pull again and it goes back to my 12 feet I think I've got yeah two more so this wall is still on its own down here I'm just gonna clean that up 